everybody. Um, so we are now on Thursday. We've done almost a full week of this. Hopefully it's going well for you. Um, if it's not, will you please let me know? You guys are not leaving many comments, and so it's making me nervous. I have a million comments from 6th and 7th grade. <laughs> um, so today, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray together, teach me, God, to add love and mercy towards others, to subtract sin and anxiety from my life, to multiply the fruits of the Holy Spirit and to divide our differences as I share with others acts of mercy today. Let's all t pause for a minute and um, add in what we would like all of us to pray for. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our fathers here and in heaven or wherever they may be. On St. Joseph's Day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All right. Um, so we are doing today, we're adding a little complexity into um, radical expressions, and now we're doing radical equations. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? What does an equation have that expressions don't? An equal sign. Good. So um, we are going to um, I'm gonna have you write this in your notebook. And when you get to the page, if you want to just write these steps down and then we'll unpack that as we go. So step one, get the radical by itself. Step two, square both sides. And step three, three stars. Check it. Okay. I should all say also say simplify in there. Why did I not say that? So erase that, except you haven't probably gotten it yet. Um, simplify is step three, and then step four is check it. Terrible handwriting, check it. Okay. All right, so I am assuming you've all paused, done that, we're back together. Um, we're gonna start with some examples, and I'm gonna show you how to do that really, not that hard if you follow these directions, okay? Step by step. So the first thing that we're going to do is let's try um, square root of x plus 2 equals 5. So you guys, we have done things like this before. Um, when, I don't know if you remember when we did um, with variables absolute value and we had to isolate the absolute value, get that totally by itself, that's exactly what we're doing again. It all comes around again. Get the radical by itself. So I look on here and I say square root of x plus 2 equals 5. So I locate my square root. It's on the left side. I have plus 2 with it. So how do I get rid of plus 2? Correct. Minus 2 on both sides, of course. That, these cancel out, so I have square root of x on this side equals five minus two is three. All right, that brings us to step two, square both sides. Um, so the reason we're doing this, remember, um, right now I don't know exactly what this is, and I can't have a negative number in there, right? So this is gonna help me get rid of that, um, and I, have to do the same thing to both sides. So if I square one side, square the other. Yikes, that was scary when I was that close. Um, then that should work. So I'm not going to worry every time like, what's, what is this? X, the square root of x squared. That would be square root of x times square root of x, which is x squared. Take that. Oh, it's just x. Whatever's in there is what I'm putting down, you guys. That is once I square it. Um, I no longer have my square root anymore, right? So that is gone. So I just get x equals, what's 3 times 3? 9. Okay, now, this particular thing, um, you have to check it, and here's why. We're not going to see it yet, but in a few minutes we will, where some of these um, do not have an actual answer. You get an answer and it looks good, but you put it back in, you find out, oh no, that doesn't work for different reasons, okay? So, um, 
for instance, if this had happened to be negative 9, then I would put it back in and you can't take out the square root of a negative number. But you're going to see that. It, it, it becomes clear in a few minutes. So um, I'm going to go back up to here and I'm going to put it in. So I get the square root of 9 plus 2 equals 5. What's the square root of 9? Correct, 3. 3 plus 2 equals 5. I don't even have to go on. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 equals 5. Check. I want to see that check mark. Okay? I want to know that you have checked all of these. So my answer, circle it, go back up there, x equals 9. Now on tonight's homework, or today's homework, it's not homework, I don't know why I'm saying that. On today's work, what you're going to do, I'm going to give you the page number, and then I've attached a sheet, and it just has like, x equals, h equals, m equals, and then you fill in the answer. I want all of these steps written on your paper, and you have to be able to tell me if it's not um, a real root, and then we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, you should have that all copied down in your notebook. Ah, that was close. I do have this bungee corded, but apparently it's not perfect. Okay, so, Five times the square root of x minus 2 equals 5. So the last time we did this, um, we looked and there was something when I went to get rid of, uh, to get the radical by itself, there was a plus 2 on that side. There's not, but what do I have instead? Yes, the 5. What does that mean when it's right under here? Remember our square root when we did um, grouping symbols? It's one of them. If it's right in front, it's times. So 5 times the square root of x minus 2. How do I undo that multiplication? What's the opposite of times? Divide. So I'm going to divide. And you guys have seen, really, I'm, I'm doing this whole thing, right? I'm dividing by 5. And you know from our earlier square root work um, that what I can do is, if they're outside, they're going to cancel. That is going to cancel and become what? What's 5 divided by 5? 1. I shouldn't have just done that. I can say 5 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5. That's going to that's gonna equal 1. Okay. So I'm going to have square root of x minus 2 equals 1. Hopefully no questions about that. 5 divided by 5 is 1. All right. <clears throat> Step 2, square both sides. Okay. So... Square root of x minus 2, once I multiply that squared, I'm going to get whatever's underneath that um, radical sign, and that is x minus 2. What's 1 squared? Not 2. What's 1 times 1? 1. Okay. Now I just continue to solve and simplify. So I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to, this is minus 2, I'll do the opposite. I'll add 2. That goes away. I get it. x equals 1 plus 2 is 3. All right. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to come back up here and put it in. So I've got 5 times the square root of 3 minus 2. Do you see how for x I put in 3? So I'm substituting that in equals 5. So I get 5 times the square root of 3 minus 2 is 1 equals 5. What is the square root of 1? You are always, I'm giving you a hint here, you always have a perfect square under there. All right? So what's the square root of 1? What's 1 times 1? One? 1. So 5 times 1 equals 5. Is that true? Does 5 equal 5? Bingo. Check. You did it right. Circle x minus 3. And again, that's the number you're going to write in um, to the answer form. Okay? Make sure you have this written down as an example. All right, we're going to do a couple more so that you see some that maybe don't work out like we want them to. All right, so 3 times the square root of x, and then I have plus 8 on the outside of that equals 2. Very similar to what we did before, right? We had um, we had something on the outside, and we also have something multiplying. 
think back, like if you had three, just plain old 3x plus 8 equals 2, what do you always do first? What's unattached, right? I'm always going to add or subtract first. If you need to write that over here, add or subtract what's not attached, what's not attached to our square root first, then multiply or divide what's attached to the square root sign. Okay, so that's just a little reminder there. So if you need to write that down, then do. All right, um, so I'm going to, this is plus 8, so what am I going to do to move it over? Minus 8. So now I have 3 times the square root of x. That's 0, don't need to put it. What is 2 and negative 8? What's 2 plus negative 8? Different signs, positive 2, negative 8, subtract. 8 minus 2 is 6, which is further from 0 than negative 8. So it's 3 times the square root of x equals negative 6. All right. still haven't isolated this. Still haven't gotten the radical by itself. Now I've got 3 times that, so I'm going to divide both sides. That goes away. Square root of x, it doesn't go away. It's 1, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times the square root of x is the square root of x. All right. Negative 6 divided by 3, negative 2. All right. Going to do what? I've finally gotten to square both sides. Cannot forget this part. Okay. Take what's under here, right? X equals, what's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. Okay. So X equals positive 4. That's my answer. But I've got to put it in up here to check it. 3 times the square root of 4 plus 8 equals 2. What's the square root of 4? 2. So 3 times 2 plus 8 equals 2. What's 3 times 2? 6 plus 8 equals 2. Does 6 plus 8 equal 2? No. It's 14 does not equal 2. Okay. I have checked that. This is what is called an extraneous E-X-T-R-A-N-E-O-U-S solution. Extraneous solution. That means it's an extra, thus the word extra in there, extra solution. It doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you can do, you can write extraneous solution, which is kind of long. You could write empty set, you could write null set, or you could write no solution. You guys, all four of those mean the same thing. When you're doing this for homework, you still have to write x equals 4. You found the solution. It just happens to be an extraneous solution. You still need to fill, it, fill in x equals 4. But then next to it, you're going to do one of these four. I don't care which one. Type in extraneous solution if you feel like you like typing. Uh, write no solution. I don't know that. Well, you could do this. You could do those. Um, that's in typing. I guess this is the difficult part of all of this. My cog code broke. No, it didn't break, but it's not working today. <laughs> so I had to come up with different ways to write things for 7th grade and 6th grade. It's all right. Anyway, I would either write the, type in no solution or empty set. All right. Should have that written down. Um, let's try another one. Um, okay, I'm going to do two more and then let you go on your own. You can do these examples again. Um, I, I really would write these down because they, um, I think it'll help. All right, so I'm thinking right away, <laughs> I know the answer to this. It's an extraneous solution. Nothing can equal to negative 1 over there. Not so fast, my friends. Let's 
work it out first. So what, here's my um, radical. What is not, anything not attached to that? Yeah, a five up here. Is it positive or negative? Positive five. So I'm gonna subtract, because remember I said add or subtract what's not attached first. So minus five. Okay, that goes away. Ooh, you guys, don't forget this. What is that? Negative of b plus three equals, what's negative one plus negative five? Negative six, okay. All right, what's in front of here that we don't see always? A one, that's right. So in a way, this is like always saying one times b plus three. In this case, it's negative one. What did we do <coughs> when we had something multiplying? Well, if you have a negative, if it's one, you don't have to do it because it's the answer is the same. But if it's negative one, you must divide that out. All right, so I'm gonna divide. What do I get? Well, this cancels out. I get square root of b plus three. That's what I've got to do. Negative six divided by negative one is what? Positive six. Ha ha. I now have square root of b plus three equals six. I have um, gotten my radical by itself. What's step two? Square both sides. What do I have under here? Once I square that, I can take my square root sign off and I just have b plus three. Six times six is what? 36. How do I get b by itself? Minus three, minus three. And now you'll notice I'm using the same things up here. Add or subtract what's not attached to the um, variable. I'm doing the same thing over here. If this was 5b plus 3, I'd still subtract first. b equals 36 minus 3 is 33. And I don't have 5b there, so I don't have to divide by anything. It's just b equals 33. All right. I'm thinking I have a good thing. Let's see, is it a good or a bad solution though? So put it back in. Five minus square root of, for B, what am I substituting? 33 plus three equals negative one. What's 33 plus three? Remember what I said, if somehow you don't get a perfect square in here, you've done something wrong, okay? So 33 plus three is 36, so I get square root of 36. Five minus the square root of 36 equals negative one. What is the square root of 36? Six. So five minus six equals negative one. What's five minus six? Two different signs, subtract, six minus five is one. Negative is bigger, negative one equals negative one. Yes, that is a solution. B equals 33 works. Yay, that worked well. All right. You cannot just see, oh, it's negative, I'm done. I don't have to do anything. Nope, you gotta get your solution. You gotta put it back in, okay? Um, you have to check it. Last one. I hope you guys are doing these with me as I'm doing them. Like not just watching, but like, and of course you can pause, but just write it down as I go. Um, and hopefully that gets you kind of like the rhythm of how to do all this. Square root of a plus three equals one. All right, this looks like a good one. So again, how do I get it by itself? Well, I've got to add or subtract first, so I'm gonna subtract the five, exactly like last time. 5 minus 5 is 0. That's a positive. If it's positive, do I have to write positive in front of it? No, you don't have to. Equals, what's 1 minus 5? Negative 4. Okay. What am I going to do to both sides? Square it. I've got all by itself. Now I can square it. Okay. I have a plus 3 equals, what's negative 4 times negative 4? Positive 16. Right. Now, I'm isolating my variable. How do I get 
a by itself. I have to subtract 13 on both sides. I get a equals 13. That's my answer. That's what I'll write down. I'm going to check it. So I've got 5 plus the square root of, what do I put in for a? 13 plus 3 equals 1. This is looking a little weird. So I've got 5 plus, this is going to be square root of 16, right? What's the square root of 16? 4. 5 plus 4 equals 1. Does 5 plus 4 equal 1? No. 9 does not equal 1. So what am I going to write? So I'm going to write this. That's my extraneous answer. And then I'll write empty set next to it. Okay. So I got that, but there's really no solution. I might write, <clears throat> that would be, have been fine. But I could also write there's no actual solution. So next to A equals 13, I'm going to write no solution. Okay, it's an extraneous answer. It doesn't work. And what this is setting you up for, we're going to go as we go further, you're going to actually get two answers for some of these, some of them three answers. Do they all work? Don't know. Got to figure it out. Okay, so we'll have to figure out um, if all of my, and some of them, what we'll find, now in this one, we're only finding one answer, but as we go a little bit further into quadratics, we're going to find out that you actually have, you get instead of just one solution, you get two. But you have to see, do both of them work? So we're setting you up for that. This is step one. All right. You have mastered this. I know you have. Um, do the practice things. Pause this video. Go back and look at it. Check it out. Please follow these steps. They're going to help you. That's kind of your key um, for what we're doing. Okay, um, excellent. Like I said, ask questions. I haven't heard many, but if you have any, do that. And no, I miss seeing you guys. Hopefully we're going to do Google Hangouts soon, um, at least in groups, and then um, I'll get to see you. Take care. Bye.